There are literally hundreds of spells in WoW, and knowing exactly what to interrupt can be really confusing. Maybe you search the forums to see advice like, just kick the polymorph, bro. But this leaves even more questions. Does it mean every polymorph? What about the other spells a mage can cast? Do you need to kick those ones too? Trying to figure this out on your own can take years of experience. And our goal when making this video was to give you a cheat sheet so you can skip all the trial and error. To do this, we'll be splitting spells into three interrupting priorities, high, medium, and low. The high priority spells are the ones that you can safely kick no matter what, and low priority include the bait casts that sometimes even trick the most experienced players. The area in between these extremes is a bit complicated, and priorities sometimes change from season to season. Well, with one exception. There's one super important concept that helps you figure out what cast to kick no matter what class, patch, or even expansion you're playing. It's spell schools. Every spell in the game belongs to one or more schools. Frostbolt, for instance, is on the Frost School, but mages have multiple spells in other categories like Arcane, Fire, and even Nature. This means interrupting Frostbolt still allows mages to use other abilities since the lockout only denies them from using Frost spells. Other casts are on multiple schools. Stellar Flare, for instance, is on both the Nature and Arcane Spell School which means interrupting this ability prevents balanced druids from casting anything else. But since Stellar Flare is on the Astral School, it means kicking a cast like Cyclone, which is nature only, doesn't lock out the other abilities. Well, this obviously means that all you need to do is kick the spells that have the most schools, right? Well, yeah, but it is a bit more complicated than that. You have to consider other things too, like who the spell's being casted on, and whether you're close to a kill or falling behind. We've made these considerations in this guide. And for a more complete learning experience, check out our PvP Academy after this video, which can only be found at skillcap.com. Interrupting is just one mechanic needed to master PvP, which is why our Academy guides go hand in hand with our Epic class courses, which condense years of learning into easy to follow videos. Every season, we help thousands of PvPers just like you hit their rating goals, whether it's rival, or even rank one. Skillcapped saves you time and fast tracks your improvement. If this sounds too good to be true, then don't worry. We're backed by a rating gain guarantee. If you don't see improvement while using our website, you don't pay. We're the only service that can offer this because you'll actually see results. So what are you waiting for? Visit the link below and get the rating you've always wanted. All right, back to the video. We'll start with what spells to interrupt when fighting priests, since they're easily one of the most popular classes in the game. And to kick off its high priority, we have Mind Games, a cast that every priest spec has access to, and it's extremely deadly as it hits really hard and transforms the target's healing to damage. Another high priority interrupt is Vampiric Touch, a Shadow Priest specific spell that's key for their overall damage and their ability to ramp up pressure. This is also one of the few abilities in the game with Dispel Protection, which means if the cast manages to land, dispelling the debuff will cause a negative backlash effect. But if VT is interrupted, not only does it put the SP behind on building damage, but also blocks them from using other key cooldowns one of which is Dark Ascension and Void Eruption. This is a bit of a rare cast to see, as most of the time this will be an instant cast if the priest specs in to the Void Origins PvP talent. But nonetheless, if they are not, you're capable of denying the SP Burst and other key defensives by locking out this spell and Vampiric Touch. Next up, we have Mind Control, which is a channeled crowd control which demands special attention when used on your healer. This CC can technically be removed with an offensive dispel effect like Purge, but if that's not possible, then MC is a fantastic spell to kick. Now as a quick tip, if you're free to do so, wait until the cast is complete before interrupting it, as it'll add a fear DR on its target and you'll still deny it when it matters. Last up, we have a relatively tricky ability and that's Mass Dispel. This is something that'll demand a bit of focus and game knowledge, as not all of its casts will be high priority. But when MD is used to either dispel a CC from the enemy healer or to remove an immunity from your teammate like Divine Shield or Ice Block, this will be a game-changing spell to kick. When paired with the improved Mass Dispel talent, this will be a 0.5 seconds cast, which means kicking it requires some quick reflexes. 
Moving on to the medium priority, we'll find Penance and its counterpart, Dark Reprimand. This is the main casted source of healing for Disc Priest. Now these are technically the same spell, but Penance is on the Holy School while Dark Reprimand is in Shadow. Penance is a bit higher on the priority list since the majority of Disc Priest healing is attached to the Holy School. Another medium priority cast is Schism, which is the closest ability between low and medium priority of Disc Priest, as usually it's used to buff their atonement heal by ramping their damage. This isn't super threatening, but nonetheless, Schism can still be very deadly when paired up with a Mind Games or Shadow Word Death when your team is hanging on the ropes to survive. As far as Holy Priests are concerned, they definitely rely on the Holy School to use two of their main casted abilities, Heal and Flash Heal. These are both medium priority interrupts, as it's more situational, but can definitely be the key to victory if interrupted when pushing for a kill. Okay, to wrap up Priest spells, we have their low priority cast, and the first one will be Mind Flay, which is rarely used in PvP anyway, with the exception of the Mind Trauma PvP talent. Mind Flay is a filler spell that's almost never worth kicking. Our second spell in this row will be Mind Blast, another filler spell that's not that relevant for Shadow Priest damage and it's no longer that important to interrupt for Disc after the recent nerfs to Expiation. Moving on to our last low priority spell, we have Smite, a spell that doesn't hit that hard and is only used as a filler for Atonement healing. Despite locking the Priest on Holy, it's usually better to save interrupts for more important spells. Let's move on to Warlocks, which includes all three specs. Our first high priority ability to look out for is the infamous Chaos Bolt, a Destruction Warlock exclusive that not only hits really hard and can be a win condition on its own, but is also on the Chaos Spell School, which includes all of a Warlock's abilities. And that means kicking Chaos Bolt makes the Warlock effectively useless. Our next deadly cast will be Unstable Affliction. Now, since most of the spells from Affliction Warlocks are on the single Shadow Spell School, you'll both deny their Spellbook and Wind Condition while also saving your healer some headaches. Moving on, we have Fear, but specifically when it's targeted at your healer. At this point, you probably know the drill already, but any CC aimed at your healer will be a priority to deny, especially when it's full duration, but even as a follow-up CC. To stay on theme, we have another casted crowd control, Shadow Fury, which is an AoE stun that's generally used to set up heavy damage or a chain CC, in both cases worth an interrupt. Aside from CC cast, we have Hand of Gul'dan, a demonology-specific spell that ramps their damage, and similarly to Chaos Bolt, this spell counts as both Fire and Shadow, which means that kicking it locks out other key spells. Another high priority win condition we recommend you look out for is Summon Demonic Tyrant, which is one of the main sources of Demo Burst. Not only does this demon deal crazy damage, but also buffs all their other pets, making this easily one of the best kicks you could have ever asked for. Now to our last spell in this row, we'll have something that's a little bit less exciting, the Pet Res from Warlocks, especially when talking about demonology. But nonetheless, any spec that doesn't opt for Grimoire of Sacrifice will have their damage, utility, and survivability from Soul Link tied to their pets, making this a game-winning spell to interrupt. Moving up to our medium priority, our first one will be Fear aimed at your DPS. Note that more experienced Destro Warlocks will put you in a rough situation by casting Fear as bait when they want a Chaos Bolt. If you end up kicking the fear, then they get what they wanted and will be able to freely bolt you. And if you don't kick the fear, you'll also be controlled while they cast the bolt on you anyway, which is just a dual-edged sword. Our best tip here is tanking the fear, hoping to get quick dispel from your healer, and then interrupting the following chaos bolt. Our next spell on this row is Drain Life, a really hard spell to categorize since if you're facing an Aflock, this is capable of fully healing them, making this a really high priority if the win is in sight. If that's not the case, or if the Warlock is in Affliction, you don't have to worry about this cast. Two other decent Warlock spells to look out for are both Drain Soul and Shadow Bolt. While they aren't their main sources of damage, they're both on the Shadow School, which shuts down most of their damage. And that's opening up our lowest row of priority kicks. We have both Summon Vile Fiend and Call Dreadstalkers, two spells that are from a single school, Fire and Shadow respectively, which means that denying one will still allow them to cast other abilities. 
Moving on to arguably the worst spell to lock out when facing an Affliction Warlock is Soul Rot, with the rare exception of when your team is stacked on the Warlock. It's on the Nature School, which means the Affliction Warlock can still use all of their other damage and CC. And lastly, we have both Immolate and Incinerate, spells that, even though are the biggest part of the destruction damage breakdown, won't really stop the Warlock, as they'll still be able to cast both Fear and Chaos Bolt. Let's move on to Mage, which is another popular class with multiple spell schools. To start with high priority, we have Polymorph, but more specifically, when it's aimed at your healer. If this cast is allowed to land, it can be the point where your team instantly starts falling behind. By preventing it from landing on your healer, not only do you prevent yourself from falling behind, but you also prevent the mage from using Blink and Counterspell, which means they can't interrupt you. To follow up, we have a spell that's mostly used with the same intention, and that's Ring of Frost that's directed at your healer. Just note that since this spell is now from the Frost Spell School, a different one from Polymorph, experienced mages will bait your interrupt in one of these two casts in order to cast the other one, making CC on your healer hard to shut down. Since the spell is AoE, it means interrupting it can prevent multiple people from getting CC'd. Moving a bit away from the CCs, we'll have our first Frost Mage exclusive high priority damage spell, and that's Glacial Spike. This is one of the hardest hitting abilities in the game, which means interrupting it is a must if anyone on your team is low on HP. Against Arcane Mages, be ready for Arcane Surge, which is another source of burst and their main win condition. Since Arcane Mages rely exclusively on the Arcane School, this is a super important interrupt, as it'll block out a major part of their damage, mobility, and control. Now, going down a tier, our first medium priority find will be once again Polymorph or Ring of Frost, but this time when it's aimed at a DPS. The reasoning behind this is simple. Sometimes there's not much happening, and these effects can easily be dispelled by your healer. Arcane Missiles and Arcane Blast are also medium priority since they're the main sources of damage for Arcane. They won't instantly cause death like Glacial Spike, but can easily snowball into unhealable damage if left to freely cast. Wrapping up the medium tier, we have Shifting Power, a channeled spell that reduces all the mage's cooldowns, which can desynchronize some defensives from their offensives while also getting your healer off guard by having a counter spell earlier than expected. The only reason why this isn't high priority is because it's under the Nature Spell School, so it doesn't share a lockout with anything else. That leads us to our third tier, the low priority, and our first set of spells making this cut will be Scorch and Fireball which are both fire mage spells that are commonly seen to farm and build up damage, while most of the time not even worth interrupting. Similarly to this, we'll also include Frostbolt, a spell that we barely even see anymore, as many frost mages rely exclusively on Ice Lance and Glacial Spike to deal damage. And lastly, we have Ring of Fire, which can deal a lot of damage, but is on the Fire School, which is the most unappealing school to deny against Frost and Arcane Mages. Now, this is commonly used as a bait for kicks or as an answer to being interrupted on a more useful school. Let's move on to Druids and see what interrupts rank highest. To open up the high priority spells, we have Cyclone. But in this specific case of spammable CC, we'll not distinguish if this is targeted at your healer or DPS since this can't be dispelled normally, making Cyclone a key ability to deny in pretty much every offensive or defensive scenario. Moving on, we have Stellar Flare, a balanced spell that's categorized as an astral ability, counting as both nature and arcane, meaning that interrupting this cast will shut down all other damage in CC. Lastly in this category, we have Convoke the Spirits, which is a fairly rare spell to see nowadays, as it's almost never taken but still makes the cut as an honorary mention, as this can be very deadly if left to fully channel. Moving on to the medium priority cast, our first one here will be Regrowth, the main casted source of healing for all druid specialization, which can be crucial to deny when pushing for a kill. Next, we have resto-only healing spells, and those are Wild Growth and Nourish. You'll see these casted way less often, but nonetheless, still worth an interrupt when trying to close out the game. Closing out medium priority, we have Entangling Roots, a spell that's on the same nature school as Cyclone and All Heals. Roots can be really hard to deal with for some melee classes when not stopped or dispelled. 
Lastly, we have our lowest priority kicks, starting with Starfire, which is probably the worst spell you can kick when facing a balanced druid, as this is on their arcane spell school, which doesn't deny anything else meaningful. So only ever consider interrupting this if it means saving your teammate's life, as this can still do some high damage. And similarly to Starfire, we have Wrath. Just note that Wrath is a bit higher on the kick priority since it's on a more important school. That's also going to deny healing in Cyclones. Nonetheless, its damage isn't worth your interrupt most of the time. Now, you might be wondering why Tranquility didn't make this list, and it's because it can't be interrupted normally if the Druid is playing both Keeper of the Grove and Inner Peace. Now, with that said, you can technically stop its cast with Ring of Peace, but only if the Druid is playing without Inner Peace. With that covered, we move on to Monks, and here you really can't go wrong, as most of their spells are on a single nature spell school. Kicking off high priority, we have the cast you'll see the most when facing Mistweaver Monks, and that's Soothing Mist, a spell that makes the other cast instant during its channel, which means kicking it denies a ton of healing. The exception to this is when playing against a Fistweaver Monk, who melee attack to heal instead. They'll sometimes hard cast too, especially with one spell we'll cover a little bit later. Next, we have Song of Chi Ji when targeted at your healer. This is commonly used as a follow-up CC from a prior Paralyze or Leg Sweep, and can put your healer in a long control chain, making this an important cast to deny. Last up, we have Shaylun's Gift, a cast that works as a buff to Mistweaver monks by enhancing their healing capabilities. Similar to Soothing Mist, interrupting this cast and following up with some CC can make it impossible for normal healing monks to keep their team alive. Now to our only spell on the medium priority, we have Song of Chi Ji when aimed at a DPS, since this can be dispelled by a healer and it's not that easy to get off and is technically a skill shot. To wrap things up, our only spell on low priority will be Essence Font, as this ability is now mainly used to get into melee healing mode for Mistweavers by activating Ancient Teachings, which allows them to heal with melee attacks. Next up, we have Shaman, a class with multiple spell schools, but with more importance. And to start off the high priority, we have Hex, which is a bit of an unusual crowd control since it's considered a curse, making it possible for some DPS specs to dispel, while also making it undispellable for some healer specs. So if your team doesn't have a class that can deal with curse dispel, or if your dispeller is the one getting hexed, then be sure to stop this cast. Moving on, we have Stormkeeper, a spell that activates heavy burst potential for both elemental and restoration. Add to the fact that it's on the same spell school as Hex and their heals, and you have a recipe for a good spell to interrupt. Going down to medium priority, we have both Healing Surge and Healing Wave, which are the main casted sources of Shaman Healing. This means if you're pushing out for a kill or looking to chain your kick into some crowd control, you should definitely consider kicking this as it can be a clear win condition. Moving on to the lowest priority, we have Ice Fury, a spell that does some reasonable damage, but since it's not on either of their main spell schools, stopping this won't achieve you anything meaningful, as most of their toolkit will still be available. On a similar position, but definitely a better spell to deny, we have Lava Burst, since this is a massive hitter. Whenever you're falling behind and need to recover or deny enemy damage, this will be a good kick. Other than that, treat this as a straight low priority, not worth kicking. Lastly, we have Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning, two abilities that aren't a key part of Shaman damage anymore unless used with Stormkeeper. The only upside of stopping a raw Lightning Bolt is that it's on their main spell schools, being nature, of course. Now we'll move on to Evoker, which is where things get a little bit tricky. Because Evokers have so many dual spell schools, we see this question pop up on our Discord all the time. To start up the high priority, we have Sleepwalk when aimed at your healer. Similar to other CCs, denying control on your healer is good in most situations, and when Preservation Evokers are kicked on this cast, it'll also lock out their green spells, which are a main core of their healing. Next up, we have Nullifying Shroud, and this might seem confusing to some people, but arcane spells are categorized as bronze spells, meaning that you not only will be able to deny them from getting this buff for a while, and maybe chain off a CC after your interrupt, but also will block them from using big cooldowns like Rewind, Time Dilation, and most of their healing over time effects. Moving on, we have both Disintegrate and Eternity Surge, the core of Devastation Evoker damage, making it a top priority to avoid pressure. 
But that's not all. If it's a preservation evoker channeling Disintegrate and you kick it, you'll also block their bronze spells, which denies them a core part of their healing. Going down to medium priority, we have both Spirit Bloom and Dream Breath, the two main casted sources for healing for preservation. So similar to other healers, interrupting this when pushing for a kill can be decisive to win. Next up, we have Sleepwalk, intended for DPS. You guys know the drill already. Stopping this also shuts down the Preservation Evoker green healing spells. And if your healer is in a situation that dispelling this might be hard, denying this cast will be very helpful. Besides this case, let them cast and simply dispel it. And lastly, in the medium category, we have Living Flame to heal. This being valid for both specs, as Devastations can do some serious off-healing with it. Now, if it's a preservation casting this, it means that their team is in a dire situation and out of the green casted spells. So denying this may be the small difference between landing the kill or not. To wrap up things, we move on to our low priority spells, starting with Fire Breath and Living Flame when used to do damage. Fire Breath has the exception in the strict case that you're playing with a hot based healer, like a Resto Druid, and the enemy evoker is using Breath to AoE perch. Lastly, we have Dream Projection, a green spell that leaves a hot on whoever it hits. The only reason it isn't higher is because if you kick this instantly, the Preservation Evoker will still be able to get that hot on their partners if they're close enough, since it's an exploding AoE effect. With that covered, we move on to a very straightforward class, the Paladin. And to not waste any time, our one and only high priority spell to look out for will be Repentance. Not a common pick, as it shares a talent node with Blinding Light. Nonetheless, when Paladins opt for this talent, this will usually be one of their main win conditions, making a crucial cast to deny on your healer. Beyond this, we have some medium priority spells, including both Flash of Light and Holy Light, their main source of casted healing, making it a valuable lockdown to achieve pressure and land kills. After concluding all of the caster classes, we separated a few important spells that come from physical damage dealers, but nonetheless are still good to interrupt. Our first one will be Hunter's Revive Pet, and this should be considered at the very top of high priority, as this is easy to say that it's a game-changing ability to interrupt since their pet is a source of mobility with freedom, defensives for more of sacrifice, and in the case of Beast Mastery, their main source of damage. Next, we have Demon Hunter's Eye Beam, and even though DHs most of the time won't be specced into Furious Gaze, which would give them 10% haste, this still hits hard and also denies them from using defensives or key spells like Chaos Nova or Netherwalk. Treat this as a spell between medium and high priority depending on the situation. Even if you think you don't have the best mechanics, interrupting is less about when you kick, but more about what and why. This is what makes WoW PvP so hard, that there's never an obvious answer, and usually the biggest obstacle is years of game knowledge. Rank 1 streamers sometimes make WoW seem easy, but that's because they've been playing the game for so long. With enough knowledge, sure, WoW can be easy, but sometimes it just takes a really long time. Skillcapped was designed with this in mind, condensing years of expert knowledge into easy-to-follow guides. Our mission has always been the same, to make sure you get better at a pace you didn't think was possible. This is why we're able to offer a rating gain guarantee when you use the guides at skillcapped.com. They're designed and proven to make you a smarter player, capable of achieving your goals. With courses for every class and a money-back guarantee, check out the links to get started today. Anyway, guys, that wraps it up for this one. Let us know how we did in the comments below. As always, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.